Hey, my name is Milan, and in this video, I'll show you how you can use both Serilog and Seek as an all-in-one monitoring platform that covers structured logging and distributed tracing. So this is the system that I will use for introducing structured logging and distributed tracing. I have three API applications, a stocks API, a risk management API, and a reporting API. The stocks API is going to be our main entry point where we have a couple of API endpoints that are all related to purchasing stocks from the stock market. Now, the main endpoint that we are going to be using is the post endpoint for sending a purchase order request. And we're going to create this order, add it to an in-memory database, and then publish a message using mass transit. Under the hood, we are using RabbitMQ as our message transport. This is going to be handled inside of the purchase order sent consumer this is going to use this HTTP client to interact with a third party API to fetch the pricing information for a particular stock. And then we will decide if we can purchase the stock or not. And if that is the case, we're going to publish an order filled message. This message is what's consumed by the reporting and risk management services. So that is the flow that we are going to be using for the demo. Now let's actually enrich this with some logging. And even though I want to use Serilog, for my logging, it's only going to take care of the structured logging aspect and exporting those logs to seek. But from my code, I'm only going to depend on the built-in iLogger. So I can inject an iLogger and specify the purchase order sent consumer as the generic argument. And this is going to represent my source context in the structured logs. You will see this later. So how do we write a structured log? Well, we can say logger and then we have access to a couple of logging methods. I'm mainly interested in the extension methods with a concrete log level. And let's say I just want to log an information log. I'm going to say processing purchase order. And then for example, I may want to specify the order identifier. Now let's say I do it the naive way and I hard code the order ID inside of the string. Now this is going to produce the log message that I want. It's going to contain the order identifier but this is not going to be a structured logs. So instead of using an interpolated string, you're going to represent your structured log elements using parameters. And then you can provide the actual values as additional arguments. So I'm going to provide the order ID as the structured log argument for this parameter here. And then let's use this to introduce a few more logs. Here I'm going to say couldn't find purchase order. And then here, if the last price is greater than our limit price, we can say couldn't process the purchase order. But here we can do something interesting because we have the order object and we know that it's not null. So instead of logging just the order ID, I can log the entire order by specifying an order argument and then the add sign in front. This is going to cause the structured log property to be serialized into JSON. And then I can also specify the last price as another argument. So let's provide the actual values. I'm going to pass in the order and the last price. Then I'm going to say here, let's update this to processed purchase order. And then here we can say publishing order filled for order. And then let's just use the order ID as the structured log arguments. So this is the general idea to how you can approach structured logging. You can decide if you want to log just a value or a complex object that's going to be deserialized into JSON. And then we need to actually install Serilog that's going to take care of properly formatting this structured log and allowing us to export it into C where we can visualize it. So let's go ahead and install some NuGet packages. I'm going to look for Serilog. And because we are running in an ASP.NET Core application, I'm going to install Serilog ASP.NET Core. Let's go ahead and install the latest version. And then let me find the Serilog Seek Sync. I'm going to have to search for it so that I don't spend too much time looking. And I want to install Serilog Syncs Seek. Now, Serilog and Seek are maintained by the same company. So that's why I like working with this combination. They have excellent synergy and Seek is an excellent platform for ingesting your structured logs and allowing you to visualize them, filter them and analyze them to figure out what is going on inside of your system. The next thing we need to do is to configure Serilog with our application. And my preferred approach is using builder, then you can access the host, and then you have access to the use serilog method. This method has an overload that allows me to access the host builder context and the logger configuration. And then what I can do is tell serilog that it should read the configuration that it needs from configuration. This might seem confusing because I'm using these same words, but essentially this means that we're going to be providing the serilog config values 
from the application settings. And then I can use the host builder context to provide the iConfiguration instance. Since we installed the Serilog ASP.NET Core library, we can introduce a middleware from Serilog. So I'm going to say app use Serilog request logging. And this is going to introduce some additional logs when we send HTTP requests to our API. So this is an excellent value add from Serilog. And then what remains is to provide the actual configuration. So let me specify it in my application settings development JSON, and then I'll walk you through what's going on. I have a top level Serilog section where I'm configuring the syncs that I want to use. Syncs pretty much represent where you will be sending your structured logs. So we're going to be logging to the console and to the seek service. You can define your minimum levels in this section. I'm setting the default level to be information. And then I can overwrite individual namespaces. For example, I'm setting that the Microsoft default level should be information. You can set this higher or lower depending on your needs. Higher than information, we have warning. And then lower than information, we have, for example, debug or trace. But let's go back to information, which we already had. And if you take a look, I actually have some IntelliSense here telling me what are the possible options. So this is really cool. The next section is going to tell Serilog where to write the log. So I'm writing to the console and to the seek instance, and I'm configuring the URL where the seek server is exposed. This will be the URL value, and I'm actually going to be running seek inside of a Docker container in my Docker Compose setup. In the enrich section, I'm adding some enrichers from the log context, from the machine name and the thread ID. And I'm also specifying the application name for the Stocks API application. Now all we have to do is to replicate this into the other two services that I have. So I'm going to do this quickly. So let's add the same value to the risk management API, and I'm just going to update the application name. Then let's do the same in the reporting API. Let's paste the configuration in and I will update the application name to be reporting API. We also need to take care of adding the respective NuGet packages. So that's something that I'm also going to do. Let me paste them directly to the project file because that's going to be faster. And then I can close all of this down. And what I have to do is apply the serial configuration. So let's also add that. We added it here. Let's add it to the risk management API. It's also going to pull from my application settings. And then one last thing I want to add is the Serilog request logging middleware. So let's also include that here and here. So we quickly added Serilog to our free APIs. And now I just need to add my seek image to the Docker Compose setup in order to run it as a container. So I'm going to add the setup required for seek. I'm calling the service stocks.seek. I will be using the data last seek latest image and giving the container a name. I'm also adding a volume to persist my structured logs and traces later when we introduce them. And then I'm exposing seek on the default port and the user interface will be available on the port 8081. So with this setup in place, let's start the application and I will show you how structured logging looks like. So the three services that I have are running in the background. And if I navigate to the seek user interface on localhost 8081, these are the structured logs that I can see. So you can see we have some startup logs from our services, configuring the mass transit endpoints, for example, here and here. And then you can see the free messages from mass transit that the bus has started on the RabbitMQ instance. Now, if I go into the Swagger UI, and let's say I send a post request to try to purchase some stock. For example, we want to get one share of Microsoft stock with the limit price of 500. And let's just say we want to get one share. I'm going to send this request and we hit this breakpoint in my API, which is my stock endpoint. So I'm going to create this order, add some structured logs that we're going to observe in seek in just a moment. And we're going to publish the purchase order sent message. This is going to immediately hit the breakpoint in the respective consumer. We get some more structured logs here. We fetch the stock price data from the third party API. You can see the response here. And the last price for Microsoft when I'm recording this video is $412. This is less than our limit price of 500. So we're going to fill this order at the list price and publish the order filled message. And we get the response back in Swagger. But what I'm interested in are the structured logs that are going to show up here. And you can see from this log entry here where we started the request and then all of the other logs here generated from our free services to satisfy this one request. 
So we are creating our purchase order. You can see the structured log properties for the order instance containing my detailed information. This can be very useful in debugging. Then we have our message, how we have published the purchase order sent message. If we continue going, you can see that we get the response back from our API. And then we have our consumer running in the background from this log here, processing the purchase order getting the stock price information and a few other logs that we have here. So this is all very useful, but it has one drawback, and that is that there's no easy way for us to connect all of these logs to one API request. So let's go ahead and introduce distributed tracing and you will see how things will start falling into place. I am again going to start from the stocks API and introduce support for open telemetry, which is what we are going to use to enable distributed tracing. So if I look for open telemetry packages, there are a few that I want to install. One of them is the HTTP client instrumentation. So we're going to install that one. I'm also going to install the open telemetry protocol exporter and the ASP.NET core instrumentation. So these are the four packages that I'm going to introduce. And then let's also take them from my project file and I'm going to add them to the other two projects right away. So we have our NuGet packages in place. Now we need to configure some services. So let's go here, for example, right after we added our HTTP client, and I will say builder services, and then we are going to introduce the open telemetry services. Then I'm going to configure my resource, and what I want to do on this resource is call the add service method, and I'm actually going to use this to provide my application name. So this is going to be the stocks API, and we're going to update this configuration for the other two services that we have. And then I just want to enable tracing using OpenTelemetry. So I'm going to call with tracing, and now I can provide a delegate to further configure tracing. So we installed some instrumentation packages, and I'm going to use them to introduce HTTP client instrumentation. This is useful when I'm sending HTTP requests to third-party APIs, which we are doing. And I'm also going to add ASP.NET Core instrumentation, which is going to take care of the internal things going on in our ASP.NET Core request pipeline. And then you can also add a source manually, and I will use this to configure mass transit as an additional source for generating distributed traces. Then I'm also going to add the OpenTelemetry exporter for my traces, and this is my base setup. So I'm going to copy this to the other two services that I have, for example, right after the mass transit configuration. And I'm also going to do the same in the reporting API. So we have OpenTelemetry configured in all of our services. However, the exporter isn't really configured to work with Seek. Now, what you could do is provide a delegate here that gives you access to the OpenTelemetry exporter options. And then from the options object, you have an option to configure the endpoint which is a URI where you can access the service that's going to be consuming the distributed traces. You can also configure what is the protocol that's going to be used. And the two supported options are gRPC and HTTP. Now, because I'm working with Seek, I'm going to be using the Protobuf protocol. If I wanted to use gRPC, I would have to go over HTTPS, and I didn't want to bother with this. So this is the simpler approach. Now, I'm also not going to be hard coding these values here. Instead, I'm going to pass them as environment variables in my Docker Compose YAML file. So this is what I'm going to add. I need to set the OTL exporter OTLP endpoint environment variable and the OTL exporter OTLP protocol environment variable. For the endpoint, we're going to point this to our seek instance, and then I need to specify the endpoint that's going to be ingesting the traces. This is going to be ingest OTLP v1 traces. And Seek actually added support for distributed tracing relatively recently. I believe the stable version that supports tracing was released maybe six or seven months ago. I'm also setting the protocol to be HTTP protobuf. And then let's copy these environment variables into the other two services that I have, and my distributed tracing setup is ready. So let's run the application and see if this is actually working. I'll start from the Swagger UI, and let's send the same request to purchase a share of Microsoft. And I'm actually going to send this request a couple more times, and in the end, purchase a few more shares. So this is great for my stock portfolio, but it's also interesting when we open up Seek, this time when I open up the Seek dashboard, and if you are paying attention, you can see that there is some timing information next to my structured logs. And this is actually coming from my distributed traces. So our open telemetry integration with Seek is definitely working correctly. And what this allows me to do is to open up a structured log, for example, this one, which is the post request to the stocks endpoint. And if I click on trace and then find, 
I can filter out all of the structured logs and distributed traces for the entire request flow. So what you can see here are the individual spans that form our distributed trace. And then under here you have the structured logs. So this is an awesome way to be able to trace a single API request through multiple distributed services. So you can see we are sending our API request to the stocks API. Then we have a span for sending the purchase order sent message, which is being received and processed by the same API. And then we are publishing an order filled message, which is received and processed by our two services. Now what's really cool about this is you can go into the individual span. So we are filtering by the trace ID and the span ID. And this allows us to observe the logs for that particular span. So you can see our structured logs here. For example, we can find the detailed order information. If you want to see something else, we can go into this span here where we are processing the purchase order sent message. So you can see additional logs that we have inside of this span. And then we have a few more spans with the respective logs inside from the other services that we have. I think that it's excellent that Seek finally has support for distributed tracing. And now you can use one platform for your monitoring needs. And if you want to learn more about Serilog, I have an excellent video about the Serilog best practices and you should watch this video next. Also, make sure to click the like button if you enjoyed this video. Check out my clean architecture and modular monolith courses to improve your software architecture skills. And until next time, stay awesome.